Shadows over Innistrad Remastered is on MTG Arena now, so it's time for a tier list that nobody asked for. A Momir tier list. If you're not familiar with the Momir format, it's a format in which you can discard a card and pay mana once per turn to get a random creature of that mana cost. This video pertains specifically to the Momir Madness format on MTG Arena, in which your deck may have a small number of spells in addition to basic lands, rather than the original Momir Basic on Magic Online. We are also assuming that our general plan is to top up at 7 mana, which means that we are planning to skip 1 mana creatures when we are playing first, and summoning every turn if we are drawing first. The S tier is for creatures that practically end the game. For example, Everson Angel of Hope. In this case, there's no creature at this tier, so let's move on to the A tier, which are very good creatures that give you a huge advantage and will often help you win the game, but not quite completely dominant. On its own, Aldrich Lunak Marshall is a vanilla 3 and 3, which is why it doesn't make the cut at S. However, in many cases, it will go nuts and give you a massive advantage, so it does get the A grade as an impact creature. Groundskeeper and Tireless Tracker both do the same thing, and that's giving you a tremendous card advantage over time. Both of them will allow you to play a land and drop a creature each turn, while constantly dropping higher mana cost creatures, while your opponent has to top out at a certain mana cost. The price of 2 mana is a small one to pay, they're in the A tier rather than the S tier because, again, they don't actually win the game on their own. Even though Tireless Tracker does grow over time, the overall value you're going to get from the two creatures is pretty similar. Amrako the Promised End is one that I debated whether to put into the S tier. Other than a 13-13 Flying and Trample, being the only creature at 13 mana means that you are guaranteed to summon it and you can freely attack with it, summoning it back even if it dies. On the other hand, in a world where you've gotten to 13 mana, a 1313 flyer with trample is not quite so decisive anymore, and you do have to be careful about rolling Momir when you already have one on the battlefield. Taking into consideration the mana cost, it's a creature that has a lot of impact and will gradually increase your advantage, but falls just short of the S tier. In the B tier, we have creatures that are clearly above average, Creatures that make a strong impact on the game, but don't quite break the game open. In this category, we also have mana generators and card advantage creators. A cantrip creature like Straben Inspector may not do anything on its own, but the extra card it generates means that you will be able to top out at a mana cost that's one higher, without having to skip a turn. In the same vein, mana generators not only let you top up higher, they also let you get bigger creatures out faster. They won't win the game on their own, and there's a limit to how much impact one card or one mana can make, which is why they are in this tier. In this category, we have Drownyard Explorers, Exultant Cultist, Batlam Reveler, Sin Prodder, Stromkirk Occultist, Briarbridge Patrol, Deathcap Cultivator, Sage of Ancient Lore, Ovenwald Captive, and Wildfield Scarecrow. The second group are strong creatures at their price point, with a particular emphasis on evasion, considering that this is a format where getting flyers is up to chance and removal is very limited. A 5-7 flyer with vigilance doesn't seem to be all that great for 7 mana, but just as in draft and sealed, a creature like this can stabilize the board or break a stalemate and end the game. Creatures in this category include Chisela the Broken Blade, Dozens of Perfection, Churros Masterpiece, Minerac Demon, Flameblade Angel, Gold Knight Cascator, Mirroring Dragon, Ovenwald Hydra, Sagada Heron's Grace, Archangel Avacyn, and Bruna the Fading Light. The third group are creatures that have good, useful abilities but with certain limitations, such as being one use, having limited impact, or having a significant cost. They include Selfless Spirit, Sigardian Priest, Subjugator Angel, Sadia Heretic Cathar, Trio Perdition, Assembled Alphas, Altered Eagle, 
and Olivia mobilized four. Now we're in the C category, which are generally average creatures for their price. They include cheap creatures with evasion or other abilities that make them useful even in the late game, or a more expensive creature with a good enough combination of size and ability. A vanilla 5545 will fall in this category, as will a 3-3 flying at the same price. Not really excited to get these creatures, but hey, you can do worse. Finally, in category D, we have creatures that are below average. Some of them just don't have enough impact at the mana cost, such as most of the Eldrazi with on-cast abilities, or they just don't have enough impact altogether. For example, a plain 3-3 for 3 mana is a pretty decent creature for its price, but it's just not going to do much in a format where people are constantly dropping more expensive creatures every turn. That's why you're going to see a lot of creatures with less than 3 power, creatures with abilities that are limited in usefulness, or creatures like Diagraph Colossus that simply don't work in this format. They're just there to be a warm body, and sometimes that may be enough, but rolling into one of these usually puts you at a disadvantage. Finally, let's break down tiers by mana cost. Shadows over Innistrad Remastered is a relatively weak set for Mumir, largely because the transform and meld mechanics do not work with tokens. Many creatures would be at least one tier higher if they could transform, or if their cast effects actually worked in Momir. As it stands, however, Shadows over Innistrad Remastered contributes very little to the world of creatures at 7 costs or above, although it does mean that Emrakul, the Promised End, is now available in the MTGA Momir pool. The pool of 5 to 6 mana cost creatures is fairly strong, and roughly half of the creatures you can draw from 1 to 4 mana have abilities that can make them somewhat relevant even in the later part of the game. That's it for our Mumia tier list, and I hope you enjoyed this video that benefits no one whatsoever. If you've never played Bomir and you want to find out how it works, feel free to check out my MTG Arena playlist where I have a number of Mumia Madness livestreams. Thank you for watching, and if there's a next time, I hope to see you there.